This is Mark Tronson of the Australian Missionary News. I have here with me today Ross Clifford. Ross has been a very good friend to me and of mine for many years. Now Ross, can you tell us something about your growing up years? Well Mark, it was an interesting uh, period. I, I grew up in Chatswood in uh, Sydney. Grew up in a Christian family. Went forward in the 59 Billy Graham Crusade as an eight-year-old, Mark. So oh, I, wonderful. I'm an old 59er. <laughs> uh, teenage years, pretty, you know, uh, lost my way a bit. Um, went to Burton Street Baptist Church, which was in the city for many years, and then North Sydney Baptist Church. And um, so always had a love for the city. I think it's one of the reasons I might have gone back and practiced law in King's Cross because of those years of Burton Street. Those who know Sydney in the heart of the city, sadly it's been sold. Burton Street is the church where John Ridley preached a sermon on eternity that sent Arthur Stace out into the streets of Sydney wow. writing eternity. And Arthur, I used to sit on Arthur Stace's knee <laughs> as a kid <laughs> at Burton Street. So. Wonderful stories. Now Ross, as well as being a Baptist minister and the principal of uh, Morling College, you were a lawyer and a barrister. Now, can you tell me something about why you did law? I think I did law because I've always uh, had a, a real desire to be about justice and uh, to represent people and I really love community law. That means, you know, dealing with people who are, you know, are struggling, facing the courts, uh, going through matrimonial issues. So, a great interest in that and that's uh, why I did law and why I ended up doing law for a number of years in King's Cross. Uh, and you can imagine, pretty colourful place, colourful characters, but I think as Christians we need to be doing law where we would think Jesus would be. That, that's oh, always yes. interests me. And yes. so then we went and lived in the Northern Territory for a couple of years and I actually lived in uh, Tennant Creek and uh, worked in Tennant Creek as a lawyer. With uh, My wife was there as well and that was an interesting time as well, but also dealing in Tanner Creek, you're dealing with the businesses of the town and everybody else, but you're also dealing with everyday people, everyday struggles, before the magistrates, before the courts and situations. So I think it's good to do law, in my case anyway, in the sort of places you'd expect Jesus to be walking, and okay. that's not necessarily down the main streets okay. of the CBD. Now, Ross, um, uh, you were at Guy Mere Baptist Church, mm, which mm. is one of the biggest churches, and then you went to Morling College as the principal. Now, this is Australia's largest seminary. Now, you've brought a very fresh approach to this. Can you mm. tell us something about that? Well, I, I really think seminary theological Bible college training should be about taking God's word to God's world. And so it's just not enough to give people an understanding of the Bible. You have to equip them to live it out interact with the issues and the situations and the marketplace that they're in. And I also think theological education cannot just be for the elite, not just training that 1% of people who are going to become pastors. It ought to equip the laity, it ought to equip the person who wants to be a lawyer, a doctor, a housewife, a clerk, a teacher, with a better framework worldview to operate from. So Morling has been committed to training the best pastors, doing the best job we can on preaching and pastoral care. Now but Morling's in Sydney? In Sydney, okay, yes. Right. But you know we're even looking at different places where you know we're looking at Newcastle and the outer west of Sydney and working with pastors there as well and uh, down south and in Canberra ways that we can bring education into those areas. So we're flexible, residential remains the main game, residential full-time on campus, uh, but we have part-time people, distance education. Mark, it's wonderful to be in a chat room on distance education, have a doctor from Nepal, pharmacist from Vietnam, a youth worker down in Menai, all different denominations, a housewife somewhere else, and I've been in these chat rooms, 16, 17 people in the chat room at one time talking about the uniqueness of Christ around the world. Astonishing, and, Ross. And at the same time, they're on campus full time, yes. a, a, another group of students. So it's about delivery to the whole church, making sure you don't lose the equipping and training of pastors for what the church really does need. Now, Ross, you are also hands on because every Sunday night, you have a talkback radio show on Radio 2CH. How has that affected your ministry? Well, it's tiring because it means it's about a day a week. 
because by the time you go on, that's three hours, but you get ready for the program, you work with your producer, your Sunday nights are you know, a very different night from most other people, so you could be preaching in the morning, uh, but Sunday night from you know, five, six o'clock or whatever, you basically focus on your radio program and you don't get to bed till two o'clock in the morning and away you go. So it's for 10, 11 years, that's taken a lot of time and energy. But Mark, I'm a great believer, you can't talk to students and people about reaching people and caring for people and being in the marketplace, not just within the walls of the church, if those who teach don't do it themselves. I mean, what's the Absolutely, point? Absolutely, yes. What's the point? Yes, yes, so, yes, you know, you, yes. I mean, it's modelled, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. learnt. <laughs> it's modelled. Now, um, uh, one of your major themes as both a lawyer and a barrister and a minister and a theologian has been apologetics. Hmm. What role does apologetics play and for the future of Christianity in Australia? Oh, look, a big role, massive role. I mean, apologetics is about showing the truth and relevance of the Christian faith. And Mark, although we have 60 odd percent of people who still say they're Christian in this country, mind you, 24, 25 percent are saying they're atheist. Most people are doing their practice of spirituality from a non-Christian perspective. They're following Oprah and friends, you know, a little, little dab in reincarnation, a little dab in uh, astrology, a little dab in the tarot. It's not that Australia or the Western world is becoming less and less spiritual, it's becoming less and less Christian in its practice. But it's a delightful time to be alive. I'd rather be alive when people are exploring spirituality and asking the questions than being sceptical. And that's, that's the world of the first three centuries. Yes. And that's where the church exploded. Yes. So yes. we've got to encourage and equip the church not to run from the questions that are being asked, not to run from the alternatives that are being explored of, in spirituality in our country, but learn how we can connect with that. And like the Apostle Paul in the early church, show them that Jesus is the one who is the true fulfillment of this longing and this search. So I think it's great, exciting times to be alive. Ross Clifford, it's always a wonderful pleasure to be with you, to spend time with you. This is Mark Tronson from the Australian Missionary News signing off.